December 7. The Imani Center for Policy and Education and your election headquarters brings to you the Minority Political Parties and Independence Candidates Election Debate. Our guest today is Kofi Kranting, another independent candidate who is confident of beating both the NDC and the MPP come December 7. Before I engage him though, watch this. Nobody likes whiners. People that spend all the time whining all the time, I really get on people's nerves. So stop whining. Really? Who travels 3,000 miles to be a whiner? We could have been whiners from our constituencies. We didn't need to come here. So this attitude has to change. If you want to engage us, then be serious about engaging us, because we're not here to play. Thank you. Stop spending, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this, please, we know it doesn't work. So stop whining all the time saying it doesn't work. If it worked, you probably wouldn't be sitting there. So nobody likes whiners, so stop whining. You are right. We came here to sit with the decision makers to formulate policy to help us integrate us into the system. Where are the decision makers? You tell me, where are they? Where are they? They are nowhere around here to listen to us. So now, everything we talk about here is going to be second and third class. It's going to be washed out, and whatever is left is going to be passed on to the decision makers. Everybody comes in here and has an attitude that, oh, I got something better to do. And we have Kofi Kranting with us, joining us via Zoom live from the United States. Um, good well, it's good afternoon here. What time is it where you are? Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. How are you doing, Mr. Dazzy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, let's get to Excellent. know you better, uh, first of all. Uh, who are you? Who is Kofi Kranting? And why should anyone take you seriously as a presidential candidate? Well, uh, I'm a husband. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an advocate for what's right. Um, I've worked at the wealth capital in finances on Wall Street. I have an engineering background, so the way I process problems is different. Um, everybody comes in with an attitude, you know, we have a problem, we have to have a meeting, we have to have uh, uh, a committee formed, we have to have, uh, uh, you know, let's get together, talk and talk and talk. We want to get to it. First thing I do, faced with a problem, you take a look at the facts, you evaluate the facts, and you make a conclusive decision which way it needs to go. So the mind is different. And understanding money, having worked in a, uh, you know financial capital of the world, I understand the attitude, uh, I understand the culture. And it gives me an incredible edge uh, in knowing systems also, how things ought to be in place. I know for a fact, if you were to count all the maybe hundreds of problems that you would say Ghana has, you will drive all these problems to one fact, that if we, our approach to it was a science-based, data-driven, human-centered consciousness and leadership, we will solve all these problems. And the reason that I know, because it's been done in Singapore, it's been done in Japan, it's been done in Malaysia. All these first world countries have proved that fact. But our 275 leaders in parliament, NDC and MPP, likes to have a circus and not get to the problems. And that's why we're sitting here 28 years into the Fourth Republic. Uh, we've been looked at and laughed at by the whole world. Right. Uh, sitting on a pot of cash, all these resources, and don't have the mental capacity to make the right decisions, right. to move this country forward. Right. And that's why I am different, and that's why we're going to fix the problem once and for all. So science-based thinking, let's apply that thinking to uh, well, the first news story we did in this bulletin today, um, the drive to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Um, how would you apply your method of approaching challenges to this specific one? Well, it's, that's a beautiful question. And Mr. Dazzy, I'm glad you brought that up because now my question to uh, the president who made 
promised us that was what data was he looking at when he promised that, that he was going to make Accra the cleanest city. See, once you have the data, then you'll be able to sit down with people who are incredibly versed at solving the problem and we'll put them to charge to fix it. If you don't have the facts and the resources, then you cannot even begin to say you're going to be able to fix the problem. It's not something that you just get up and say you're going to fix a problem. You got to have the facts. We don't have the data points to be able to make that decision at this point. We know the consciousness to fix in it means uh, yes, we're going to have a distribution line of uh, garbage collection. We have to really put everything uh, underground in terms of sewer or in terms of garbage. Uh, we need to have uh, 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 merchants who use uh, plastic pay more. Uh, we need to levy them for paying more using non-biodegradable uh, receptacles uh, for food because that's the biggest problem. That's where the biggest problem is. We need to stop the importation of garbage into our country. Nobody worries about that. And so you cannot just go from nowhere and say you're going to make a crowd the cleanest city when you haven't really resourced centers to be able to function because mm -hmm. people have to eat, people have to live their lives. So what I'm saying is, is when you have all the data points, now if you were providing me with all the data points, then I'll tell you how it's going to be done and how exactly how long it's going to take. You right. don't know it. And if we were to go to the Ministry of Interior or Agriculture or wherever, whatever sector, they wouldn't have the data either. So you cannot just say by saying stuff. You would just be talking. Okay. You need data, Mr. Dazi. Okay. So I, it, it's a fair point that you raised that we need data to inform a promise like making Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Uh, but we do have a few points. And I was just having a conversation actually with the vice chair of the Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation made some very interesting um, revelations. We spend only about 1.4% of our GDP when we are de dedicating it to the wash, the entire wash sector. Unfortunately, Ghana has seen about 15,000 cases of cholera on the average every year. We have about $300 million dedicated to the sanitation sector alone which does not seem to be having as much dividend as it is. There is, mm. some, there is however, um, a mindset that perhaps we have efficient waste management companies. So, so the data, yes, is there. We, we have seen that we have 11 landfill sites in Accra. All of them are full. Um, so there is an, an indication of what the data is. But my question is, is that do we have an idea how to approach the problem? How Absolutely. are we going to approach it? Absolutely. Mr. Dazi, l listen to me. This is very simple. It's simpler than you think. You see, everything you've talked about in the last couple of minutes about this data, it's not really tied to anything. It's not tied to anything. See, the first point is you need to have an integrated national ID and address system. You know why you need to have that? Because we need to start holding people accountable. Now, you cannot hold people accountable if you don't know them and you don't know where they live. That's the first problem. You see, so everything you've talked about, good, not good enough. But we, 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 have seen, you see, we, we have seen investments and this, this government's first year in power saw the rollout of the Ghana Post GPS system, which is a national addressing system. And then the National Identification Card, the National Identification Authority has issued millions of cards now which is the identification system. So they are being applied, no? No, it's not. And you're not, you're talking only half the facts. Listen, in the just completed uh, voter registration, 80%, 80% of the national card, of the Ghana card was based on people, guess what, uh, guaranteeing for other people. Okay, 80%. And 63% of uh, the people who just got registered are also another uh, uh, huge uh, uh, segment of people who have been uh, 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 guaranteed for by somebody else. So now if you take a look at that process, it tells you that 90%, approximately, almost 90% of people are new to this whole process. So they're not on the system yet to be able to say confidently that we have uh, an integrated national ID uh, and address system. Now, 
the beauty and the genius of this is not just having the ID. That makes your point, and you will be right. The genius of this is making it integrated. You will not be able to tell me if the system is integrated to the police, to sanitation, to Ministry of Education, to all the other agencies. Because if it's not in sync, then you cannot hold the person. Because then, see, the strength of that whole unit, that whole system, is at the weakest link. You cannot tell me, and I know you cannot tell me, because there isn't such a thing. Right, you right. See? So just by you having an address system, Anand sees something that's hanging out in the sky somewhere, it doesn't mean anything because it's not tied to anything. Okay. So we're not just having processes. We have to have processes that's linked and meshed together to make right. sense, to right. interpret it, and to be applied to our lives. Mr. So Kranzen, it's a whole different consciousness. Mr. Kranzen, thanks so much. But you just mentioned the voter ID registration. Have you registered um, for the voter ID card? It's, it's going to be done. It's no problem because once you, the Electric Commission have made uh, 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 plans that anybody who's coming into town can go into a regional office and get that done. So that's, that's not an issue. You do realize that there's, there's a 50-day cutoff, that if you register before, within 50 days of the next election, you can't vote in that election. I'm, I'm aware of that, and it's not going to happen because we'll be at the debate in the next couple of days. Great. Beyond that, how are you campaigning? You're in the U.S. and you're in Ghana. How are you campaigning? Well, because of the COVID situation, uh, mm -hmm. you got to understand uh, we are uh, it's purely um, uh, uh, social media. But once we get into town, we're going to start combing the whole phase of the uh, uh, all the regions, going visiting with different regions, talking about what we're doing and letting Ghanaians know we're going to be able to come see you one-on-one -on -one at your office and talking with the plans that we have uh, and how we're going to be able to do it. So for now, it's basically social media because you have to understand, science-based, right? When you look at 7.7 uh, 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 million people being between the ages of 18 to 35 and 7.4 million being the ages of 36 to 55, uh, 85, 90 percent of these people spend most of their time on social media. So that's the chunk of our market. So, uh, but the data actually shows the data actually shows from the National Communications Authority that individual Facebook accounts, like individual users of Facebook in Ghana, is just around four million, which you know is very small an amount of the number of people who would vote in the election if you consider. Uh, it just registered, we just registered 16.6 .6 million people to vote mm -hmm. um, ending yesterday. So there is still a lot of ground to cover, um, Mr. Absolutely. We're not, mm -hmm. listen, we're not saying uh, the job is done. We're saying that from what we've been able to do and the results that we're seeing on social media, it's incredibly encouraging. And uh, we, we're going to be able to cause a serious damage with what we are experiencing. And we're happy with what we've been able to So did you say you'll be in this. town for the debate, or you'll join us remotely? Um, we're hoping to be there live. So, I, so I, I, my, uh, you know, one of my biggest dreams in life is to shake your hand in person. So I'm hoping One of your biggest dreams in life. Okay. Yeah. Take, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. But the debate is on Thursday. It's in a couple of days. So... Uh, I mean, even if you're in town, there'll, there's probably, there'll probably be quarantine, but it'll be good to, you know, have you That's around. Good. Thank you so much, yeah. Kofi Kranzi, for joining us. Independent presidential candidate, rooting everything on science and data. Trust me, this should give you an idea that the independent presidential candidate and minority political parties debate will be amazing. We'll take a few messages. There's more on the Pulse after this.